Hello, my name is Fred McNeil, and you're watching QAC TV 7. The show you're watching is called Papa's World, and that's referring to my old friend Papa Hemingway, and this is a book, or a show about books, authors, and we encourage you to read books, and that's, that's what we do every week in, uh, as we bring in different authors to talk about the book. This time we're going to have real fun. We have a native Ken Islander, and we've got <laughs> some stories, so you guys be careful. Nick Hoxter. Nick, thank you very much for coming. Thank you for Appreciate it. Me. And this is the first time in about eight weeks we can say there's not snow on the ground, Amen. it's not 20 degrees, <laughs> and we're going to make it. Now, Nick, we've had a little time to talk before the show. How many books have you written now? I've written three, okay. and I'm on my fourth one. Okay. Uh, if everything falls together, probably by May, I'll have We'll it. have again. We're going to get you back when it comes out. I again, hope so. Right, and do I that. So. Now, Nick, before we start the books and your writing, tell me, you grew, you're you a native. Oh, yeah. Tell, tell us a little bit about growing up. I was born in Stevensville, June 23, 1931. Okay. I don't know what they call the street today. In my day, it was Locust Street, but everything right. changes, you know. Uh, I went to school, uh, Stephensville Elementary, and uh, I didn't get to go right away to Stephensville High because the war came. My dad was in Baltimore, okay. and uh, so in 43 or 44, I went there for a year and a half. Oh, so you went from Ken Island and lived over in Baltimore? Yeah, I went okay. there, and we had about, uh, we probably had 50 people students in our school. When I, got, when I went to Southern High, we had 1,800, oh, and this well, boy was lost. You went from 50 to 1,800. Yeah. Now, let me ask you, uh, tell me about growing up on Ken Island. Oh. In the, this would have been the 30s and the 40s, yeah. right? It was heaven. It was oh, heaven. Okay. And yeah. when you say, uh, tell me, uh, first of all, there was no Bay Bridge. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. I had the ferries. The ferries were running. Yeah. Okay. We had the ferries at Mattapique, and the Love Point Smoky Joe ran from Baltimore to uh, Light Street. Okay. And it took a two-hour and 20-minute trip up there. That was a nice trip, a uh, really nice, enjoyable trip. Uh, the Mattapique ferries, that took about uh, 30 minutes. That was right across yeah. the bay, right yeah. there in the Annapolis yeah. area. Okay. And when, in my youth, it started out in Annapolis to, to uh, Mattapique, but then it went from Mattapique to Sandy Point. Okay. And... Uh, I've had friends tell me that during World War II, they were, they left and went across uh, on the ferry to wherever they went, for, wherever they was, Fort Meade or wherever sure, they were sent. Sure. And when they came back, they just couldn't believe the changes on the island. Oh, that it happened during the war? Yeah. Really? And I had friends in Korea, my brother was one, they left on the ferries when they came back on the, from the Korean oh, War. Oh, there's a Bay Bridge. The Bay Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was a big change. No. But I, I, I enjoyed uh, growing up. I grew up at a time when everybody knew everybody. The community was so small. Oh, you sat on your front porch at night, the neighbors came over, you would swim, I mean swing in the swings. Um, the kids would go out and catch butterflies and put in jars and everybody would just, no, everybody knew everybody. You weren't watching everybody. TV every night? No, no, there was no TV. Okay, no, okay. We had radio, and, uh, but it was, um, and it was during the Depression. And so we money were was poor. tough. Money oh was tough. yeah. People, Everybody was poor. We didn't know we were poor because no, everybody, everybody else was, was poor. poor. Yeah, <laughs> but my dad butchers his own hogs, okay, raised so, her own chickens and right. eggs. I can remember right here on Ken Island. Oh yeah, Island. yeah, right in the middle of Stevensville. Okay, and I can remember uh, during the Depression, I wanted a um, some potato chips very bad, and I lived with my great grandmother. Okay, and uh, in fact, three generations lived in the same house in those days. And I said, man, I'd love to have some potato chips. She said, well, go out in the hen house, get two eggs, take a ride to Mr. Franham's, and he'll give you some potato chips. <laughs> I took the two eggs out. He had a big barrel of potato chips, yeah. reached in, filled the bag up like that, and you took the two eggs, and that was, I paid for it. Now, how about shopping on Canada? I mean, what, what, where were the stores? Well, now, listen, Stephensville was fortunate. We had three stores. Now, this is Old Stephensville? Old, old Stephensville. Stephensville. Yep. Okay, what we call Old Stephensville. Oh, yeah, yeah. what we call Old Stephensville. Uh, Franham had a store, which is a restaurant today. Um, when you say store, grocery store. Grocery store. Generally, okay. Yeah. Uh, the American store was a grocery store. Today it's Acme. Uh, right. Today that store is still there. And um, in fact, I had a lady send me some pictures of the inside of that store when her father was a manager. Now, okay, that, this, it's going to yeah. be in the new book. I mean, people, when they find out that you're doing things about the old holiday, when I started out with this, with this book, before I got finished, people were saying, what, are you gonna, what about all the pictures we've got? So I immediately followed this book within a year, and I've got close to 700 pictures. And people pictures. just helping you with oh, pictures, get your pictures. It was amazing. I'm going to tell you, I would go to their house and say, 
Hi, I'm Nick Hoxer. Oh, yeah, you're Clay's boy. I said, no, 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 not Clay. Clay was my great-grandfather. Okay. He was the blacksmith. Oh, yeah, he shooed my horses. Hmm. Everybody I, knew everybody. Everybody knew, what they did. knew everybody. And they would say, uh, I hear you're doing the book. I said, yeah. Why don't you go upstairs in the attic? There's two boxes to your left. Bring them down and them go in. through them and take what you want. Mm -hmm. And I always say, I think because I was an island boy, a local boy, they trusted you they a little trusted more. Me. Okay. They really did. And uh, then oftentimes they would say, uh, wife's cooking some crab cakes. Would you like some? Or are we going to have soft crabs? You want to stay? I say, yeah, you better, you better believe, you better believe I'm going to stay and have them and, soft crabs. Nick, you, you intrigued me as an ex-teacher. Schools. I mean, what were they like? The one-room schoolhouses? Or when you said 50 he, people in a high school or whatever? Uh, elementary school, we started out the first grade and the second grade were all in one room. Okay. One teacher. All right. uh, the third and fourth grade were in one room. With one teacher. So they combined the classes. Combined the okay. classes, yep. Now how uh, big was the class? 10, 15? Or? Oh, no, no. Right. I, I'd, I'd say probably uh, 20 in a class. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, okay. 20 in a room. Okay. They, were, they were large rooms. Okay. And uh, then the sixth grade, there was one teacher. And then when you got to the seventh grade, before they became, went to the high school, uh, Mrs. Larimore was our teacher, and she had it upstairs. All right. And back in those days, as I said, people were poor. Uh, twice a year, a dentist would come in upstairs, set up a great big chair, and everyone was taken care of with yeah, any free medical care. A free free medical, medical care. care. Yep. Unbelievable. Yep. Very good. And that was because it was a small community. Was he a local dentist? Yeah. Who did this for you? Uh, whether he was local, he he came into all the schools. Oh, did it like a circuit? Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, he did. He did. Now, how about the high school? It was uh, all the high school. Yeah. Uh, was it was there Stevensville High? Oh or? yes, oh, oh good. yeah. Oh. And yes, those days, what, what we had it, Southersville, Centerville, and Stevensville. Or what was that? Do you remember? Oh yeah, there was Tri County, which was Queen Anne. There okay. was a Churchill. Churchill had one. Churchill had yeah, high Stevensville, school. Centerville, and Southersville. Okay, all yeah. right. Now, uh, just any sports involved? Or oh, yeah. Oh, they did, yeah, they did sure. everything. Okay. Yeah, we Big did. rivalry. We, and... we didn't. Oh, yeah. Oh, better right. believe it. Okay. Southernville and Steamville, boy, the they, battle. that the was battle. it. That okay. was it. That was like Yankees and Dodgers. <laughs> okay. And we were mostly the Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> now, growing up, uh, before you went to Baltimore, did you, what, I mean, you crabbed, you fished? We crabbed. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is hard to believe today, yeah. but if we wanted to go swimming, we would take our bikes and ride to Mattapique from Stevensville. Okay, just cross, and then, the, well, what, was there a 30, uh, so uh, ignorant? No, eight, Route 18, right oh, down. Oh, okay, so you went down and 18. And if you and kept, just, you turned into Mattapique. Right. If you kept on by, you went to Roman Cook. That was another six miles, and we've okay. done that, too. That was <coughs> a bit of a haul, yeah. Yeah. That was a haul. <coughs> but we would, go to, we would go to Mattapique, and before we left, we'd stop at Franham's or one of the stores and get maybe uh, 10 hot dogs and okay. some rolls. And we'd go down and... They didn't cook go them. bad. No, they didn't no, go no, bad. No, no, no. They st we stayed from 9 o'clock in the morning till 6 or 7 o'clock at night. Made the whole day of it. Made the whole day. Roasted marshmallows, uh, hot dogs. Go over uh, Tommy Ewan or someone had a stand. Yeah, Tommy Ewan had a stand at the time. He sold Cokes and ice cream and stuff like that. We could go over there. Okay. And, you, and this it, is all nickel and penny stuff? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It cost not, yeah. I, I, I remember working. I was in high school. Probably a freshman. And Mr. Sellers came up and he said, boys, I need somebody tomorrow to set up, set tomato plants. Next morning, he was there with a the truck. You should have seen oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Now, when I got paid. How much would you have gotten paid in those days? Ten cents, a quarter, or no? One day, Mr. Freddie Carter came in and said to the men, man, I need some men tomorrow to, uh, to uh, fry sweet. That's hard labor, right? Oh, yeah. That's hard labor. Oh, right? yeah. And he said, uh, Looked at me and he and he was my neighbor. And he said, "Well, Nicholas Nickleby, there was a there was a <laughs> book out at that time oh, called okay. Nicholas Nickleby." Okay. He said, "How would you like to take the water out tomorrow?" Good job. He gave, these guys are working hard. Give them fresh yeah. water. To yeah. Yeah. Well, what yes. they did, they took uh, milk cans, metal milk cans. Okay, sure. Fill them with ice. The time Just I got them out in the field, They're they melting. were melted. <laughs> and he had two men there. He would just work around the ice house there and put put the ice in there okay. and I would carry him out in the field. I got 35 cents for that day's for work. Day. My daddy good. got 50 cents for working all day. Mm. 50 cents. And those men worked hard thrashing. Believe me, they yeah. did. Hmm. But you should have seen the feast at lunchtime. They had all the neighbors, farmers, wives come in. Oh, cooked a meal. They had fried chicken, crab oh. cakes. I don't know how they worked <laughs> after that. It was just, it was really a great something. Great meal. Great it meal. It was a different world then. It was a different it? world. Now, uh, just you, you, before we get to your books, radio. 
Was that the big thing oh, yeah. in your life at night? Yeah. Tell me a little bit, because I, uh, I missed it by about 10 years. Yeah, I think, well, and, I used to watch, listen to the Shadda every uh, Sunday okay. night. All right. There, there were favorites on. And literally the family sitting around the radio like we do with TV. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. And yeah. the Shadda would come on, and, and musical shows, or? Uh, would Bing Crosby have had a show? Oh, at that oh point? Bing Crosby, oh, yeah. Okay. Yep, yeah, Bing, right. Bing. And, of course... I grew up with it with that kind of music, and, okay. and uh, just like you heard my phone. We have Glenn Miller oh, on Glenn your phone. Miller, I was impressed. That's, that's still the best. I tell my oh. kids, hey, you don't know music today. No, no. This, the, this was the big the, man. The young ones laugh at us as they that, should. That's but right. That, that is they terrific do. music. They, they, okay. it, it, oh, I, I still love it. Yeah. And when um, several years ago, we had um, our class reunion at Steve High School. We do it okay. every year. Sure. And. Uh, I got a band out of Baltimore called the Renault Brothers. Okay. And they played the big band music. Oh, you had a great time. Oh, you had a great People time. wouldn't stop dancing. And they said they never stayed until 12 o'clock. They, they stayed after. They wanted him to keep playing. Yes, they had, loved that. Well, that's another lost art. I hate to say it, and I guess we're showing our age. Dancing's a little... I chaperoned a prom in the last couple of years. If that's dancing, we're all in trouble. Yeah, all the young are. guys, don't yeah. get mad at me. No, 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 no. You're telling the truth. I mean, when I when I dance, I want to hold this girl well, close to me. Yeah. I don't want her across the room. <laughs> I want her next to me. Yeah, it was and part of the part of the sport. So that's speak, absolutely right? right. And I wanted to tell you about no. going to Southern High. Oh, please. This boy, me. when he went to so he Southern, went from 50 students yeah, to 1800. 1800. Yeah, yeah. this is uh, a different they, world. They, each class. Now, I'll give you an example. I went in, it was seventh grade, it was 7B, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. 7A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven. You can't imagine. These are classes. Yeah. So yeah. You it, were used to one class. One class. <clears throat> and this old country boy, he didn't know anything, but he was sitting in the back of the room. They made me a southern aide, so you went down the corridor with a little tag on said, said eight Southern eight Aid. Okay. Yeah, right. you were a big you shot. You thought you were a big yeah, shot. Yeah, big yes. shot. Like Hall Patrol or something. Yeah, that's <laughs> right, that's right. So one day... They said, we're going to have a uh, drill, fire drill. Fire drill. The age will take you downstairs. I was up on the fourth floor. <laughs> you had no idea. They're still looking for my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not that yeah. bad, but I got so lost. I, I had them in the basement. I did, I did. Welcome to the Western Shores. Welcome, yes, yeah, sir. Welcome to the world. So yeah. what happened? You, you graduated from Southern High? No. Oh, I'll, no, no. Listen, Guess I was there one year. That was enough. <laughs> and... One year. Well, you know, let me say this. When I went there, uh, I guess I was, I had, I had a little more courage than I thought sure, I had. Sure. And the, one of the first things there, they said, how many of you people can play an instrument? I said, I can. I never played an instrument in my life. <laughs> but the band sounded like a good idea. Yeah, right? so I got a bugle. My, I sent coal down to Ireland. My uncle had a bugle. He sent it to me. Sent it up on the on yeah. the old Smokey Joe, and I went and got it. <laughs> it's the way they and did it. What's the Smokey Joe? Smokey Joe was in Philadelphia. It was the, the boat that ran. Oh, it's a boat. It's yeah. A boat. Okay. Yep. It was a ship, and uh, she poured out. She was um, run by coal. Okay. So coal furnaces. Big, big oh, big black blue, smoke. Yeah. yeah. So they called her Smokey, Smokey Joe. Joe. Yeah. Okay. She was a wood wood um, wood body, but but coal her, driven. Coal driven. Coal driven, and she had a steel hull. They used her to to break ice in the winter time okay. when nobody could get out. All right. So, and it was oh, I can't tell you the luxury of that. They had leather chairs you could shrink down oh, in. Yeah. Doctor Cook on the island lived there. He had a big business in Baltimore, and every morning, five days a week, he'd go up and take a cigar, sit and okay. read the Sun paper. I can see him now sitting there, and uh, so when the war, when I went up there, I joined it. Drum bugle corps. I did real good. I, you know. And you taught yourself, or they were teaching you? I mean, you just, they, they taught you. They taught you. Yeah. Okay. But you had so many, they couldn't tell your attitude oh. or not. <laughs> but <laughs> just looked like you yeah, did. Yeah, you yeah. catch on. You yeah, catch on. and I did. But when the when the war ended in in uh, August, okay, uh, forty five. I was home with my great grandparents. I couldn't stay in Baltimore. I was home with my buddies. Okay. Well, you had and your friends of, there. This is where you grew up. Nothing yeah, against well, Baltimore. Well, a lot of my just, buddies, they were away too because their parents, they were in the army and okay. so forth, and, and that you know they they, they were uh, they weren't they weren't there during the war too. Okay. So it was old reunion when we all came. All right. Home. So, yeah. so you all came back. Parents were at war or working or whatever. Oh, you yeah. all came back to the shore. Yep. Yep. At the end and, of the war. And and I can remember. In the 40s, late 40s, and I was in high school, we'd go um, crabbing down to Roman Cook on the Eastern Bay. Okay. And uh, Billy Denny was my good friend, and his, his grandfather was Pop Gibson. And he'd take his car and take us down there. And we took inner tubes and put the baskets in them. 
this is the truth now. Yeah. Crabs, we were soft crabbing. Crabs were so plentiful, we just threw the nets away and picked Came them up. Right to, yeah. pick, and just, and, and, and I would take them uptown, we'd split them up, and I'd get uh, 15 cents a dozen mm -hmm. for soft crabs. And after about three days, the people say, don't bring me no more salt crabs. I'm sick of crabs. had enough. You yeah, so we had enough. There so many, yeah. Boy, what would we do to have those uh, days again? And right? I remember um, Melvin Clark, my good friend who God called home not long ago, he, um, he and his uncle and cousins, they would go out and, and go fishing and, and rockfish. Okay. Were good. And also, Easy to catch? Plenty of rockfish? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. And, and also, hardheads were very popular in okay. that day. Okay. And they could come around. Is that a good eating time there? Right? Yeah, it was, it is well, uh, we thought so. Okay. Something to eat, but if you're hungry, you'll they, eat They would one. come around and they'd, they'd be hollering, fresh fish, hardheads, three, uh, what was it, four for a quarter. Okay. And they would clean them. And as they were doing it, mom would go out in the garden and she'd get some vegetables, potatoes, tomatoes, mm -hmm. whatever it is, and mm -hmm. we had a meal out fresh of it. Fresh fish, you had a meal, oh, fresh vegetables, yeah, right? Yeah. Now, what, what did you, so what were you doing? You, you came back, the war's over. Yeah. You working or are you still in no, school? No, no, I'm in high school. Still in school, okay. When I left high school, I went to work on the ferries. Okay. Now, you have to realize when, when uh, the war was over and all the boys come home, they, they got their jobs, jobs back. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So the Mattapique ferries were a godsend. Okay. And my dad was on there. Oh, and you were crew, cousin, you were crew brother, member, grandfather. Okay. Yeah, I was a crew, crew member. member. Right. And uh, I went there uh, after school, 49, 50, 51, and then 51. <laughs> I got out of frying pan into the fire, I guess, because the ferries were ending. Yeah, well, they knew the bridges come. Every day yes. we came out of Sandy Point, we'd see another section of bridge. You and knew I the said, time gotta, was coming. I got to find a job. So the railroad was hiring. The railroad used to run from Love Point to Ocean City okay. to Lewes, Delaware, and we called it Lewes, and it wasn't a Lewis, it was L E W S Lewes, Delaware. Okay, right. And uh, so I went there, and they, I, I got thinking. They were bringing all the cement in by, by um, car, right, rail. Right. They're building a road. I'm going to be out of a job here. <laughs> and that was the truth. The writing was on the yep, wall. What a changed community. Imagine a train. You go to Ocean City. Imagine if we had that now. I mean, yeah. Imagine if you could take a high-speed oh, yeah. train from Baltimore, Washington, Ocean City. Certainly cut the traffic down. But oh, we my lost Lord, all yes, that. Yes. What a terrible loss. Well, I tell you, in 1956, I was... A, on the railroad, okay. and I was a relief foreman, and the older well, that you in charge of a crew, yeah. maintenance crew, yeah. A maintenance crew. Yeah. Oh okay. yeah, wherever okay. they sent me, you know. And I was young, and and I wasn't afraid. Uh, sure. My foreman was 65, 66 uh -huh. years old. He didn't want to go to the, and he said, Nicholas, you 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 run that. You, yeah. you, you bid the job in. You take okay. you take all this. I I'm too old. Sure. And he was my Sunday school superintendent. He's and a we good were, guy. Yeah, a good guy. guy. But he was he was laying it on the table. I'm old. You're the new yeah, generation. Yeah, yeah. So um, I took the tracks up from Love Point to Queenstown. Oh, you actually took them up? Oh, yeah. Oh, you part of oh, that? Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. We were all union, and when you got to a bridge, you stopped. You crossed the bridge, took the railing up. You couldn't touch it because that was all union. The bridge crew did that. Really? It was a yeah. special crew. And if something happened, an emergency came, and you went down there and you fixed that bridge, the Big union club. would be there and say, how many hours did you spend? How many men were there? They're getting paid for it. We got paid. They got paid. But it was a good job. How, I want to get to your books in a second. But how did the community feel about the, the tracks being taken? To me, that was like a major part of the community being taken away. Or am I wrong? No. Uh, no. They were, I guess they were enthused and happy to the see the bridge. Bay Bridge. Come. Okay. The yeah. world's going to change because yeah. of the bridge and the traffic. Right. Okay. right. right. But, yeah, we missed the bridge. And I, I had the pleasure of uh, riding the when I was a youth riding the train, my great great aunt was a nurse. Okay. And Dr. Henry had a farm up to Love Point, just before you got into Love Point. And we would get a ride up to the station and get on it, and she would go up and spend the day with Dr. Henry. Right. And uh, the train would stop, let us off, because Greeny Grimes was a conductor and he lived oh, in Stevensville. <laughs> so on the way back, we wave it and the engineer would again. Yep, stop. Totally different world. So different world. Totally different yeah. world. Everybody knew everybody. Well, you know what we're going to do, Nick? We're going to get you back for a show. We're going to talk about the books here in a second, but just to talk about all, I think we'd go a whole hour show just on Old Ken. I know, because we're losing that history. Oh, yeah, That's we math. We're going to schedule it, but let's jump ahead, okay? Okay. That's because we want to spend at least a good 10, 15 minutes on your books. Tell me about what you've written here. But I do promise you, and I promise everybody out there, you, you got me biting on the hook. We're going to do a <laughs> Ken Island show, all right? Tell me about your books. Well, I retired from Delmar Recession Door. Okay. In 19 Up here in Southern yeah. Hill, right? Mm -hmm. 
fine gentleman. He, he was a, uh, Ted Lanskruner was the owner. Good man to work oh, for. Oh, he flew sorties off of carriers in World War II. You kidding me? Oh, he was, he gave every one of us an American flag pin. We said, you got to wear it. And we all wore it. Where's your room? Honor. Okay. I'm proud, yeah. Right. And he was so proud. When oh, you I didn't even in. know it was a local that owned it. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah, he was from Chestertown. All right. I think, I believe I heard he died not long ago. Anyway, um, I, I retired. You retired from uh, working up there. Yeah, and my wife said, um, she was still working, but she said, uh, you always want to go to Hawaii. Why don't we go? All oh, right. So we had a couple of friends, and uh, he was a retired airline pilot, and he said, I can get us some good deals. Good dealing. Yeah, yeah, good yeah. deals. Sure. So we flew over there. Oh, my. It was so beautiful. And uh, The green just jumps out at you then. Went aboard yeah. the Arizona. Oh, did you really? Okay. Oh, my. It would Pretty break amazing. your heart. Pretty amazing. Everybody's talking and talking. Okay. You get to step off. Everybody shuts up. Okay. Nobody talks. It's just the idea that soldiers or sailors entombed in there oh, yeah. right to this day. Yeah. Right? You go there and, and look right down in the hall, and you could see a drop of oil coming up every, every minute. Once in a while, every yeah. minute, a drop still of oil leaking away. still leaks, seeps out of there. And uh, then we all went to the Hall of Valor, okay. where all the names are. All the men and women. All who died the men who there. died and are buried down in there. All mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. And it, it was just. It was just pretty amazing I, experience. Yeah, but I want to tell you before no, we get no, to that. No, when no. I was at DSD, okay, I had an honor, a real honor. One morning, Ted Lasker came in, and I said, "I know that man with him." This is Delmar Versace. Yeah. The, the owner walks in with somebody. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking at him. Just walks on the floor of the shop. Yeah. Okay. Johnny Sample said he was God. You remember Johnny Sample? The football player. Yeah. Yes, Baltimore uh, Colts guy. Yeah, sure. Bit man, of a hot dog. Van walks around to me, and he said, uh, Ted said, this is my man, Nick. He said, this is Johnny Unitas. Johnny Unitas came up Johnny and down Unitas, the Johnny Unitas, he came on the board of directors. Really? We became the closest of friends. Yeah, I didn't know that. Oh, uh, he was. I wonder how many people in Queen Anne's County know that Johnny Unitas was on the board oh, of directors. I, we used to have a, um, when I was at DSD, <coughs> we used to have a um, hog roast, pig roast, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Every year in the summer, Johnny would come down. He'd come down. He would come down. Because oh, wow. he was on the board of directors and a good The good kids man. loved him. Oh, I bet he so. He set my great grand my granddaughter on his knee, and she just, to this day, she, I'll never forget it. Johnny Unitas talked well, Johnny to Johnny Unitas, when we were young men, was the biggest oh, name in football, right? Yeah. If not sports. Yeah. One of the biggest names. Yep. Mickey Mantle, uh, Johnny Unitas, kind of, kind of the same type well, you of know, characters. When Sample was out there, and when he first came in, he came from Syracuse. Right. And the first, first year he was playing. He was a uh, defensive back, kind of a hot dog, yeah, right? He, yeah. He, 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 he was the tight end. He was the tight okay. end. Okay. And he said, uh, they told him, he said, <clears throat> we're going to send you in shortly. And he, he got the shakes. He said, I'm going in there with Johnny. Johnny and I. <laughs> so he went in. Johnny said, hey, John said, listen. He said, uh, I'm going to throw you a pass. Now, break to the left and then turn sharp right and it'll be there. You understand me? Hey, I know you don't know her signals. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, I'll get yeah, it there. Yeah. So he said, I flubbed the first one. <laughs> so anyway, when he goes back to the huddle, uh, goes back to the uh, bench, he said, uh, the importers were waiting, and they said, what was it like to be in the huddle with Johnny, Johnny Unitas? Unitas yeah. It was like being in the huddle with God. Yeah, I bet it was. He called him Mr. Unitas for weeks. He, he couldn't <laughs> stop. He just idolized Well, there was Every, no bigger name in the Baltimore area, area right? he, was, he was a great yeah. guy. He was yeah, a great he was a guy. guy. But anyway, <clears throat> I'm so back you to... So you're in Hawaii. I'm in Hawaii. You, and so you, would your wife challenge you to write a book? Or well, what? this was, this was um, in the month of May okay. of uh, 94. Okay. And I came home. And I got bored. Oh, I got bored. I'd like worked all my life. I'd worked yeah, time. Yeah. I was 12 years old yeah, on the farm I worked. Yeah. So I said, I'm going to do a research of the Hoxter family. Well, I knew my Hoxter came, family came here okay. in the 1700s from Hoxter, Germany. So you went back and looked at <coughs> the family history. Yeah. So when I go, people start giving me pictures and telling me stories. Mm. About your family yeah, and other families. Yeah, and, okay. and, and all the... <coughs> so I, one day I went up to my good friend, Billy Day, and I said... What am I going to do with all these pictures? And they said, write a book. Here you go. We don't have any book on Ken. I said, no. Nah. I said, I'm not a writer. He said, Aunt Emily said, you were a good man, but you were lazy in high school. That was our, <laughs> that was our English teacher. professor. Okay. Yeah. And I never forgot that. So I started to write it. 
It took me probably ten months to write the book. Now this is growing up. This growing is, this, up on let's Ken make Island. sure we should. This yep. is growing up on Ken Island. Okay. Yeah, that's my story of what it was like to grow up back in the thirties, the forties, before the bridges came. Okay. So kind of what we've been talking yeah, about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I've got uh, it on there without it shining back at us, so we're okay. Yeah. Well, I tell you, you know, it's it's amazing. This this cover was hand printed for me. Or painted. Okay. And I went to this local. <coughs> and this is the '30s and the '40s in Canada. Yeah, and that's the Smoky Joe in okay. Philadelphia, as you can see. And that's the way the black smoke come out. The artist said to me, "If you can describe it, I can paint it." Okay. And, and you did it. I, he did it. And that's the lighthouse. It's gone now, okay. but the, the stand is still there. And uh, a lot of people who've moved there. When I go to make a speech, they'll say, we didn't even know you had a lighthouse up mm, there. Mm, mm. So, when I speak... That's why this book is important, right? Yeah, it, it, yeah, it, yeah. There's no, yeah. There's no it, history. It, yeah. It, it, it's... I hadn't got that book <laughs> in a month. Every book was gone. Mm. So, I said, my, look what I've got. Sold that many that yes, quick. Yes, yeah. So, I went um, and had a second printing done. And uh, it could, took a little while to get it. In the meantime, I moved to this one. Now, this one doesn't have many pictures, but it's the story of what it was like back growing in, up in the 30s, growing and up 40s. in the 30s okay. and the 40s before Great the bridges stuff. came. Yes, yeah. yeah. So then I went. I had so many pictures that the people, the local. This people is what you're talking me. about. People calling you up and say, "Hey, look at if I got some pictures yeah, for you." Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and and if you look through here, it's not just pictures of, of of I got some color pictures. They told me, "Don't do the color pictures. You'll you won't make." Well, I see old Stevensville High you School. They made them. Okay. And and uh, I have. And this is the second book. That's the second. And book. this was called a walk back in time. Let me just uh, Nick okay. McFerrin and I'm going to play with my angle here a little bit. Mike will get mad at me, but we can get a <laughs> shot at that. Okay. And that's book number two. And on the front are the fairies tied at Mattapique. Okay. And they were for sale when this picture was taken. Mm. And they were sold. Every one of them were sold. The Nice and the O'Connor, the first two you see here. And they went in a service somewhere else. They went over. They were towed through the canal up the uh, east, uh, the west coast to uh, Puget Sound. Oh, so they were used. Okay, in the state of and Washington. Okay. The Nice is for sale. She's still sitting there. Really? Oh yeah. I get pictures of her once in a while with a friend out there. And it still it still floats and it's still oh, seaworthy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, she got a hole in the bottom, and it about sank, but uh, they, they <laughs> saved risky. her. The nice was just sold, and it was a disgrace. They were going to make her museum. She's a shrimp boat. Okay. So that was book one and two. Book one and two. And, and as, as I go through here, there's, there are sure. so many pictures. At, and what this is with the Islanders, this was their favorite book because all their old families back are in. Old memories. Yeah, people don't even know we had a drugstore. We had a movie. In Ken Island. Yeah, we had a movie. Only one it was a church. And uh, they showed movies a couple nights a week. Or? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, right, every okay. night. Every, you know, not, not Saturdays and Sundays. Saturday no. night, but not Sundays. No, no the minister movie. wouldn't have been pleased no, with that. Oh, okay. we were very religious. I remember. And my, now we'd kill for a movie theater. That's right. In Queen Anne's that's right. My great grandmother, during the Depression, I remember being there. And uh, if things were bad, and people would come in and say, like you said, the hobo poor, got off they the train, yeah. and he'd say, "Ma'am, I ain't had nothing to eat for three days. Mm. Would you, would you give me something?" Give me something. Oh, she would go out in that garden, Dig get tomatoes, Good scramble him eggs, and I would say, "Ma, how come you taking you treating that old bum like that?" She said, "He's not a bum. Yeah. The Bible says you never know when you're entertaining angels." That's right. You don't I know said, what you're entertaining. I got so I remember that to this day. Good story. Yeah. And then you went to a book three. Book yes. three. And, and um, as you can see, this book. This Billy, one's on camera. We're yeah, good. Yeah. Billy Denny and Melvin Clark and myself. Okay. And uh, we were all together one day. And Melvin said, Nikki, you ought to do another book. I said, no, my wife will kill me. I said, uh, I would do the book and come home at night. She was a legal assistant. And after proofreading for attorneys all day. She'd come home and I'd have her proofreading my books at night time. She, there's something <laughs> oh, wrong with oh, this. Overtime. Yeah. Now, Nick, do me a favor. Speaking of time, we're about to run out of time. Oh, okay. No, that's okay. No, no, this, we're going to get you back. Let's tell the audience now that you, you've stimulated their interest with a lot of good stories. Where can they get book, these books now? You know, so many of the stores that sold books have, have stopped. I know. It's they, now all internet. Basically. So many of the printers have gone out of business. No, I know. The ones I went back to, they're gone. The whole printing business yeah, has so changed. I've had to go. I've had to go to a, a completely new printer. <clears throat> uh, as far as the books, Billy Denny, which is the uh, uh, old church house antiques in Stevensville, still right. has them. Okay, so you can get them in Stevensville. Uh -huh. New Center has them. Okay. Uh, 
the, oh, the anything place. online? Can you get them online to they, they can email me. Yeah. Okay, all yeah, right. They can email me, right. and, and I, I will see if they get them. Um, I don't have that many left because they, they I, I printed well over 3,000 of these. And they're all gone. Oh, yeah. okay. I, I may have a, half a dozen. These, <coughs> these I may have a Sweet. dozen. These I, I may have, I was smart when I printed this one, I printed 2,500. Okay, I big, time. Yeah, big time. Big time. Um, I'm sorry, your question again? No, I mean, oh. if they want copies, oh, yeah. the important thing is they can contact you. Yeah. And how would they contact you? Uh, Old Islander okay. at msn.com. Say that one more time. Old Islander at msn.com. And dot com. Okay, all right. Yeah. So three wonderful books on growing up in Canada. And what we'll do is this. Let's get you back on, and we're just going to talk Ken Island one day. Can we do that? Yeah, but listen, you yeah, know, finish my up. wife said something. Go ahead. If you don't want my husband to talk your ears off, <laughs> don't mention old Ken Island. Oh, so well, I've done it today, and I'm do, sorry. I'm, no, no, no. We're going to let you talk your ears off because that's why I'm here. Well, Nick Hoxer, thanks a million oh, for coming. Oh, thank you for having right? me here. And we'd like to thank everybody for watching QAC TV 7. You're watching Papa's World, where we talk about books and old Ken Island. Okay? I'm Fred McNeil. My time's up. Thank you for your time, and we'll see you next time.